We're talking cell etiquette. Living in that cell is on those level three and level four yards where you don't leave for a long ass time. Back in the day, they used to do the long racial based lockdowns that would have you on a lockdown from anywhere from three months to 14 months and past that. Like these lockdowns were savage. They would break people. I always would just sit and wait to hear people crack and start kicking the door and start tripping. And that's when I gathered more strength. I always felt like I took in all their weakness leaving and it gave me more power. And I just, I like reestablished myself at that point and regained myself, recomposed myself, got more strength off of their obvious weakness. I loved it. I was like, and I, that's when my self-talk was just massively evident. This is when my self-talk would just developed into the savageness it became. Because I would just tell myself, I ain't gonna break. I ain't gonna kick the door. Watch how composed I am. Watch how I come out just more jacked than last lockdown. Watch what I can show you. Watch what I can prove. The fact is, a lot of people are consistently doing stuff and not getting their desired result. That's worse. If you consistently go to the gym and you're not getting your results, it's worse than just not going because this is what happens. When you're okay with putting in that much work and not getting your desired result, you end up having a job that you don't like going to, you end up putting a lot of time into a relationship you don't even like. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. I'll continually say this every video if I have to because it's so true. I don't even want you to break it down and half-ass the dishes because this will just make you a half-ass motherfucker. But the cell etiquette is everything that you don't break it down behind that door. A lot of people act like they work out. A lot of people will have like a pact with their celly. And I can tell they do. They're like, yeah, we did our routine. They're just half-assing it. They ain't really putting their heart into it. So they don't come out a beast. They come out that bitch-ass motherfucker. And this shit is just dead obvious. So... Even in my cell, when I did smoke weed, when I did relax, I would get up early, same time, have my coffee, do my reading. I would smash a workout and then I would smoke a joint. I would turn on Sublime or something on my radio and I would just shampoo the whole cell. In the penitentiary, you have to clean your cell at least once a day, if not twice, maybe three times a day. Every time you bird bath, wiping everything down, fools in the pen, don't even like a piece of dust on nothing. If you walk in someone's cell and you rub your finger along the TV, the window cell, or the lockers, and they got dust on it, you're just like, hey, fool, like you're in here 24 hours a day. Why is there dust on your shit? What kind of slacker are you? It just shows who you are. Like there's no hiding in the pen. So the way you conduct yourself is so obvious. People can just hide out here. There's no hiding in there. People are gonna fucking know that you're a lazy ass motherfucker. And the fact is, is this is the wisdom behind it. When people know you're a lazy ass motherfucker, they just don't even wanna fuck with you tough. You're showing your colors with shit as simple as leaving some dust on the fucking TV. That's a slacking ass motherfucker. I love Southwest Airlines uh, hiring motto. Hire for attitude, train for skill. What is your attitude? What are your principles? Like, do you get locked in the cell and just sit there and cry about it? Or is your attitude, is your self-talk like, watch this shit. Watch me conduct myself like this. Even when shit sucks, watch how I conduct myself. Watch who I am. Self-talk becomes way obvious when there's nobody around or there's just very few people around and you're spent time with yourself. You just start hearing it. If you're a bitch in your head, it's going to turn you into that. Through our thoughts and through our actions, we are creating our strengths and weaknesses. Nothing else made me have the indestructible mindset that I have today. Everybody else just talking about prison, they're not sticking to nothing. They're not getting no results. I want to see the results in every area. I want to see it. Where's it at? Where's the result? If you're continually spending time doing shit and getting no result, that's worse. I'd rather see you just give up to get your non-fucking result. But the point is, is in the cell, the way they can, we conduct ourselves is everything. You break your cell off half of everything. There's a day that you're washing your sheets, you're doing your laundry in a plastic box, soaked in some Tide, you're using the fans, both people's fans to dry your shit. Like I was so like, I was so institutionalized about my shit that I would have a storage box of clothes 
that I didn't even wear. And then once a week, I would wash these clothes that I don't even wear. I'd wash them with Tide, dry them, fold them perfectly, and get some cologne on a Q-tip. And between every fold of the clothing, whisk the cologne in the Q-tips, and then fold it all and put it back in my box. And these are clothes I didn't even wear. This was just the level we kept shit at because we had respect for the smallest shit. When another motherfucker, some new ass kid, will get a dope ass pair of shoes or some dope clothes from his family and just throw them on the fucking floor. In the pen, if you see a pair of wadded up anything on the floor, it's so fucking crazy. I've told the story before that one of my fucking psychotic old cellies, Chip, he was just like, there was a pair of dirty socks in my locker. A pair of dirty socks. When I first fell, I bird bathed and I didn't clean my socks. I forgot. So I just stuffed them in the locker. I was going to clean them next time. And he goes, he looks at my clothing line, my clothes line. And he's like, where are your socks at? I'm like, what's up, big dog? And he's like, where are your socks? And I'm like, dude, I, I put them in the fucking locker. He said, get them out and clean them. And I'm like, are you fucking serious, dude? It's going to be fine. He said, I don't want dirty clothes in the house. Get them out and clean them. And this is a level four yard where you can't fight. I know fully that this motherfucker is ready to handle business about it. He's tripping about it. He's ready to go the distance over this shit. So I'm just fucking like, damn, dude, this fool is crazy. And I just fell. I just landed on a four yard. And the stories are true. Motherfuckers are whacking people over something simple as that. Something that they deem disrespectful. Because he's lived in this fucking, he's lived in this cell forever. He's been in this cell for five, six, seven years at this point. And he don't want me, some new motherfucker, some new booty ass motherfucker coming in and bringing dirty socks into his house. He squashed it there. He taught me a lot. All that type of shit. This is, well, this is where I learned how to shave everything. I didn't shave everything before then. We shave everything. Because crazy motherfuckers like that, you land on a level four yard with the institutionalized motherfucker and the fool's like, finds a, a, a armpit hair or a body hair. He's like, hey fool, this looks like it's yours. And I'm like, I'm like, fuck dude, what the fuck? You know, and, and then finally we just get into it. Like not all crazy arguing, but hey, if you don't just start shaving all your body hair and keep your body hair clean, we're gonna have a problem. So this is the type of shit you're gonna deal with is crazy motherfuckers who are down, they know the rules and they're ready to go the distance over something as simple as a dirty pair of socks and some body hair. But the point is, is now, after time of doing this massive lockdown with my old Sally, I saw the fucking, I saw what it meant. I saw how he was. He wanted the floor time. Like if you, if I didn't have my floor time set and I missed my floor time to do my workout, he was on my case. If I missed my bird bath time right after my floor time, he was on my case. And this was to help a motherfucker. Now there were times first when I got a little bit, a little bit mouthy with cops, a little bit mouthy with the CO on a four yard is a fucking life ruiner. You'll get your ass booked for that shit. Either the cops will toss your neighbor's house a different race and say, hey, since Watson was such a fucking disrespectful motherfucker, I smashed your pad, I took your cell phone. And they'll do that to a black or a homie or someone else just to cause a problem between the races so that it cracks off, there's a riot, and now you're fucked. They'll fuck you a lot harder by doing that than giving you some write-up or fucking with you some other way. So this is the thing. There's fucking shit going on in there that you don't want to ever have to deal with. I mean, this, this Selly was the best motherfucker, but he wasn't good with technology. So when I started getting in the phone game and shit like that, this motherfucker, when I'm gone, he hooks my phone up with the battery pack. Cause we have a battery pack with like, hey, it'll have rechargeable batteries in a, a cardboard tube. And the cardboard tube will have the, the ends of the fucking battery charger at each end. And he hooked the ends up wrong, plugged the charger in, burnt out that phone. Now he owed me a shitload of money for that phone. And the crazy fucking thing is someone who'd been down forever that was supposedly so fucking down, he ended up fucking rolling it up. He went out backwards over a $1,200 phone he couldn't pay for. And it wasn't even like I was pushing the issue. He was just so fucked up in his head that he disrespected the pad and who I was and everything like that, that he used my phone without asking and burned it out that he fucking, 
He ran by such a high level of honor. He didn't feel like he deemed he was deemed worthy to even run the ma main line no more. This is the type of motherfuckers you're dealing with. They're so ingrained. They're so institutionalized. They run by the rules so much that you're not going to change a motherfucker. So this is the thing. Motherfuckers out here can't even keep their word on something like a workout and a wake up time and a diet when they tell their loved ones they're going to do it. Even though they have all the comforts of the world. These are motherfuckers who something as small as that, something as small as some socks, something as small as fucking having the floor time and shit like that fucks it all off. So I would smoke a shitload of weed after I worked out. Like this was at the start of my term. I'd smoke mad weed. I'd puff joints and I would soak down the whole cell listening to Sublime. Just fucking... Dude, I smoked two joints in the morning and I'm just fucking chilling. I'm blazing. And the motherfucking cops, they didn't care about weed at this spot. They'd come by and be like, hey, watch it. It smells like weed in there. I'm like, hey, weed's legal, homie. Keep it rolling. And they, they liked me. It was good shit. At certain places, you'll find certain shit like that. It just happens to be something like that. But I mean, the fucking facts are, is don't land yourself up in a spot with some intense. People say, my, I have intensity. There's motherfuckers like block from IE. There's motherfuckers like fucking, uh, like Psycho from fucking, from NorCal. Like there's motherfuckers like that who they're just, they give me anxiety. They give me fucking bad vibes because they're so fucking crazy. And then I would drop points and go to a lower yard and people would tell me that I'm the person who does that to them. So I later realized the exchange I was giving, the energy I was putting off was so intense. It would just physically fucking debilitate people. This is what we don't want. And since we get so used to our energy out there, I'm able to speak the language of the universe better now. So now I notice when I'm putting off bad energy to my wife or I notice when she needs me, I can feel it. I can feel energy so, it, it's so intense to me that I just come over and I give her a hug. I'm like, I love you. I'm sorry. I know I'm putting off bad energy. It's nothing to do with you. I go through these phases and I love you to death. Please just don't let it affect you. I love you to death. Like you're my, you're my fucking world. So shit like this is what's going to get you the furthest in life out here is just, just checking your fucking energy, checking your energy, knowing that shit ain't as bad as you make it, that life is fucking just, life is happening for you. It's as simple as that. That's my credo. That's my fucking credo. That's what I live by. That's my fail safe. I want all you guys to find your credo. Post it in the comments what you live by. The quote that really can help you in any situation. Mine's life happens for me. So let's fucking do this. Let's make life happen for us. Even when something massively, some massive ass fuck, some horrible set of adversity hits you like 10 years in prison. You can flip it into a positive real quick by just only focusing on what's propelling you forward. Nothing else. Let's get this shit.